Welcome everyone to Friday's uh, class of this, uh, our new asynchronous lifestyle. So uh, to, I'm going to talk for a bit about vector spaces um, because the last thing, the last thing I proved on, on Monday before the exam was about vector spaces. Uh, was about seeing field extensions of, as vector spaces. So um, let me um, repeat what I said. The last thing we proved, we have a field extension and an algebraic element. Really, I'm only looking at the at the simple extension generated by that one element. And if that element happens to be algebraic and the minimal polynomial has degree n, then the first n powers of, of alpha form a basis of of that field as a vector space. First n meaning uh, going from zero to n minus one. So um, let me talk a little bit about vector spaces. Um, I won't, I mean, I'm not gonna be exhaustive by any means, but I'm just gonna um, recall some, some things, some words, some facts. So a vector space, so first of all, to have a vector space, you need to have a field. Um, so we're a field F. So it's a set with two operations. Um, you can, you can add stuff in the, in the space and you can multiply, um, elements of the space by scalars. <clears throat> I mean, I'm just calling them vectors. I mean, they're, they're both just sets with operations, but we like to call things in a vector space vectors. Um, but if you think of, a, and, and then there's obviously there's properties, uh, which I'm not gonna bother you with. Um, but the thing is, whenever you have uh, a field inside another, um, for example, here you have E containing F, definitely you can have things in E because it's a field and definitely you can multiply things in E by things in F because F is a, because E is a field and it contains F. You can multiply more things. So looking at a, at a field extension and calling it a vector space, it just amounts to forgetting the fact that I can multiply things in a field together. Um, if I think of C as a vector space over R, uh, that just means I can, I can add complex numbers and I can multiply complex numbers by real numbers. So can I do more? Uh, yeah, I can multiply complex numbers by complex numbers. Um, I'm just forgetting momentarily. Um, so, um, you know, there's there's stuff that we're forgetting. We're losing information here, but um, we're you know we, we're getting a simpler structure. We know a lot about vector spaces. You took a whole course on vector spaces, especially uh, if the dimension is finite. Then you really know a lot of stuff. <clears throat> so let me talk about some some things that you might. I remember or not um, words. Um, so one of the most important concepts in linear algebra is linear independence. 
So linear independence means um, the following. We say um, a set, so we're in a vector space. Let D be an F vector space. Um, we say <clears throat> a subset is linearly independent. If um, uh, there is no linear combination, non trivial linear combination, then gives it zero. In, in a formula, if I have some vectors in the set and some numbers, uh, I mean, some scalars, uh, um, I don't know, I think of things in a field as numbers, some scalars in the field, um, and I have that when I combine them, a linear combination just means multiply the things by the scalars and add them together. And you get zero. The only way to do this is if all the numbers were zero to begin with, all those scalars. <clears throat> I'm not going to talk about matrices, but I bet you remember uh, how matrices work. Um, something about putting those vectors in a matrix and having something about the rank. Um, So that's a linearly independent set. Um, the other important thing is the notion of spanning. Ugh. Or generating, I guess. Uh. So again, we have a subset. We say a subset spans or generates v over f, I guess I might say. Uh, you say generates, you have to be careful because rings have an idea of what generating means. Um, but rings in a ring, you can multiply elements in a vector space. In principle, you don't know how to multiply elements. So um, if so, every element of every element v of the vector space, or maybe w, can be written as a linear combination of elements in S. Um, I, I can find some stuff in the field and some vectors in the, in the subset uh, such that lambda 1d1, blah, 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 blah. The linear combination now gives me W. <clears throat> All right. So those are the two or two out of the three most important concepts in a vector space. The third one is the combination of those two. Um, so we say that a set S is a basis. Of, of V if it is both linearly independent
and spans v. So that's one way to describe what a basis is. Um, there's a lot of things, and there's a lot of equivalent ways to see them. Um, equivalently, S is a basis if every element um, W in the vector space can be written uniquely as a linear combination. of elements of B, of S. So I'm not proving stuff here because I'm not teaching a linear algebra class, uh, but hopefully this all brings a bell. Um, so when I say something can be written, uh, when I say every element can be written as a combination of the basis, this is the same as saying that the that that the set spans and when I say that this combination can be found uniquely this is the same um, I mean you have to prove this but you prove this at some point in your life this is the same as saying that the set is linearly independent so when you when you talk about existence and uniqueness of a representation in a basis, um, uh, this is the same as talking about spanning and being linearly independent, which hopefully rings the bell. It also means that you can, once you have a basis, you can write every, every element in your, in your vector space as just a tuple of, a tuple of, of scalars. So if you have this element, nothing stopping you from writing it now as what, what you've called a vector for most of your life before you took a linear algebra class. <clears throat> and then, you know, you can work with matrices, you can do all sorts of stuff. Um, so, <clears throat> Um, back to where we were with fields. If um, if alpha is algebraic over F, we have a basis which is one all the powers of alpha, except for the nth one, and well up to, up to and not including the nth one. Um, of f of alpha over f. Um, so this means uh, it means that they're linearly independent. So all of these concepts already had like their own meaning uh, when talking about fields. Linearly independent means um, if I have some numbers in the field, so this is all, now the field for which I'm thinking of this as a vector space is the, is the base field F. Um, and I have that a linear combination of the powers is zero. Well, linear combination of the powers is nothing but a polynomial in a polynomial in alpha. And this is this is saying that all the elements are zero. Because by hypothesis that alpha, no, I should have said, is algebraic of degree n means that the smallest polynomial, smallest degree polynomial that alpha is the root of has degree n. So 
the only polynomial of smaller degree that I can find that vanishes a certain alpha is the zero polynomial. Um, and spanning, we've already talked about spanning. Um, every every element p of alpha of the of this extension is is of this form. For some choice of the of the coefficients here, and furthermore, these are unique, and this makes it a basis. <clears throat> All right. So, um, so for example, one i is the basis of Z, uh, C, the complex numbers over the reals. Um, I.e. the complex numbers are things, are linear combinations of one and I with coefficients in, in the reals, as you know perfectly well. Um, max of extra spaces. One last thing I want to say. Um, this is a important theorem. All bases of a vector space have the same size. Um, and we call this size the dimension. Of, um, of V. <clears throat> this is particularly interesting when the dimension is finite. Um, so the, the complex numbers have dimension two over the reals because here's the here's the basis he has two elements and this means automatically that every other basis um i can find has also has two elements f f of alpha has a basis with n elements zero one two three n minus one getting from zero to n minus one is n many things um so the dimension of f of join alpha over f is the degree of the minimal polynomial uh, maybe I'll put a cut here because I'm going to go talk about, um, I'm going to go back to fields now. <clears throat> <clears throat>